first time I learned about this institute was from Nature magazine. It was, uh, I think, two or three pages described a new institute to come along and took over all the mental hospital. And, the, and also there's a lot of controversy in that article described the funding scheme, student, and so on and so forth. It was quite eye-opening to see Austria have a new model. And a lot of universities oppose this, I understand. But like all new things, new things come out a lot resistant by nature. So you have overcome all the resistance, become leading research institute in the world. <coughs> and in US, there are several highly visible research institute. One is affiliated with MIT, called the Whitehead Institute. The other one is affiliated with UC San Diego, called the Salk Institute and the Scripps Institute. Recently, MIT had another one called the Broad Institute. It's first jointly between MIT and Harvard. So that institute only take graduate students, not undergrad. So I understand this one is also only great. So that's the right amount to go. <laughs> so I heard the stories in history why UCSD succeeded by US University of New York at Stony Brook was not as went to the top. The difference is UCSD initially only took graduate students for quite a few years. When they has, have a, a good footing, they then to take undergraduate. University of New York, Stony Brook, take undergrad immediately. The professor has no time to do research. That's essentially all teaching. And then San Diego gives it enough time to do research and to bring to the level quite high. <coughs> all right. So what I will tell you is a journey. The journey from a curiosity discovery take 20 years and to form a start start company because become successful startup company. But for the first 10 years, is to do understand the self-assembly peptide phenomenon. Once we understood more or less fully, then we cannot go to uh, go up the chasing to find a company to do this. You apply the knowledge for things. And I don't know how many of you know MIT has a mantra, MIT. The mantra is to generate and disseminate knowledge. Okay, so that's generate knowledge is to do research. Disseminate knowledge is to teaching. So that the key emphasis or generate knowledge is the key for MIT successful after 150 and 155 years. <coughs> All right, now I tell you my story. Um, Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. This is absolutely true, absolutely. For research, you must have imagination. And knowledge is the, our predecessor uh, generate the knowledge, so we follow them. So for us, researchers, we're based on the knowledge, we go one step further that nobody has been there before. Here is Francis Quick. He said, you should always ask questions the bigger, the better. You, if you ask big questions, you get bigger answers. That's also absolutely true. Doing research is asking questions. One question, another question, you get results, looking at data. Ask another question, how to go one step further. So big questions get big answers. Small questions get small answers. Detailed questions get detailed answers. The broad questions get broad answers. This Carl Gajczyk, he discovered the Kulu disease and won a Nobel Prize. Spent 20 years in the jungle in New Guinea and discovered Kulu disease, which is later called the medical disease. And that disease is also has some implications for Christopher Jakob disease and currently the Alzheimer's disease. It's called protein conformation disease. So he said it's important to explore to do things others ignore, but that will become important in 10 to 20 years. For me, 
10 years to understand the science, another 10 years to make it into, into useful stuff. Company made the product world, uh, worldwide useful, including Austria. So here's the line of Pauline. He said, if you want to understand fu function study structure, also absolutely true. So structure determines function. And especially in protein, in cell, in physics, this in, in universe, and so on, you really study the structure, understand this is the system. His car branding, he said, new technologies are very important for accelerating scientific discoveries. That is tools. Tools and methods are very important. Without tools, without the instrumentation, only thing is dreaming. You can dream but you cannot carry this out. So with technology instrument, you can carry things out, make discoveries. Likewise, scientific discovery can also accelerate technology development as well. Here is my mentor. He is Alexander Rich. He is a good friend of Max Perutz. Max Perutz is from Austria. He is very well known. No friends since 1950s. He said, persistence is luck. When a poster asked him, a new, new person came to the lab, asked, why your life made so many important discoveries over the last six, 60 years? That's his answer. Persistence is luck. It's after two for me. It's very true. 20 years for doing that. Here is Susan Lindquist. He said, about 10,000 years ago, man began to domesticate plants and animals. Now it's time to domesticate molecules. So that's why they tell you is to domesticate my molecules. The CRISPR system for gene editing is again is to domesticate, domesticate molecules, DNA molecules. So my new research is on protein engineering. It domesticate proteins. So so far, that I have to give talk next time when I come. Here is Bob Langer. <coughs> This person, I don't know how many, how many of you have heard of him. And uh, MIT, you know, people, MIT never asked us about H index or citation numbers. So he has H index 230. That's pretty good. So he also founded uh, more than 30 companies and then a consultant for 50 entities, including nonprofit, profit foundations, and venture capital, and so on. He said, in school, you are judged by the question you answer. That's your, our homework, our exams. So you answer the question on the, for exam, try to get an A, try to get 100% right. But he, he said, in real life, you are judged by the questions you ask. That's absolutely true for research, for science, right? You publish your paper. It's the question you ask for the paper you publish, not other people ask. <clears throat> I was with your former president. <laughs> so my research concerns self-assembly and self-assembly peptides. And uh, started in 1990 when I discovered the phenomena and uh, Later, MIT found a patent in 1992. They were published a paper in 1993. So if you have good ideas, you make good discoveries, if you're interested to commercialize your ideas, you should talk with the markers first. By the time you publish, it's too late. Yeah. OK, so. Did everybody hear this? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, it's true. By the time after publish, it's, it's over. Yeah. The patent office won't reject the patent because you have published. Yeah. So self-assembly, this phenomenon is common in nature. This is self-assembly fish, individual entities, and then swimming to the same directions and so on. Have the structure. That's key is then have a structure. This is uh, assembly birds, again. Nobody asked them to do this. They did on their own. That's the whole thing about this. It's no external instructions. It's self-simple system, self-organization system. 
So here is my title. I changed a little for, for not the same as that one. But so called designer self-assembling peptides from our curious discovery to our enabling medical technology. So it's curiosity, curious discovery. So in the 1990s, I was studying proteins. So plus in East genetics, try to find protein that binds left-handed ZDNA protein in uh, yeast. So along the way, after purified the protein and uh, studied the gene, I discovered there's a sequence here in this gene has every other one is alanine, uh, every other one is alanine here. From here is uh, A, E, A, E, A, K, A, K, A, E, A, E, A, K, A, K, and so on. Repeating unit. This is like a music notes. Music in Austria is the center of the, the gravity. And for most people, and then just look at this and publish the paper and move on, do the same thing, continue to do molecular biology. Um, but uh, this simple sequence aroused my curiosity. Why the sequence like this? If you take this out, and what structure would I have? That was my question. Because in the computer prediction, this one in 1990, 1990s was predict, predicted to be alpha helix. So I, I made an alpha helix model, computer model, and also the toy, tinker toy model. So if that's true, then this, the sec peptide could do called the electron hopping transfers. Meantime, the two paper published about the sequences very similar to this, this uh, composition, exactly alanine, lysine, and, and glutamate, glutamate. Exactly a perfect alpha helix, very stable alpha helix. So I said, well, this would be very true, we should do the same. The person who published the paper was from Stanford University, then was upstairs in our building on the Duan poster. So I made the peptide, convinced Alex Rich to spend a thousand dollars, which has no grant funding, no grant. So totally a different part of money to make a peptide to study this. So, <clears throat> so after this, we were so surprised. This come from yeast, this one, from the yeast protein, which I called Zotin. And this came from yeast. It's alanine, aspartic acid alanine, as part of alanine, lysine, alanine, lysine, then repeat. So this is alanine, uh, as part of uh, glutamate, glutamate acid, alanine, and uh, lysine, and repeating four times. This again, you change the arginine, this is a positive charge, change the positive charge, negative charge, change the negative charge here. So arginine, alanine, arginine, alanine, aspartic acid, and alanine, aspartic acid, then repeating here. Finally, I made another one called arginine, alanine, arginine, alanine, then repeating four times. We call this RADA 16 type one. This RADA 16 type two, the two repeating unit. The two, two repeating. So this is a one, one repeating unit. <coughs> this molecule here become a billion dollar molecule. Okay. And we did not study that further. We still focus on that one. So that molecule, if we put in water, they form something like a hydrogel. But hydrogel, it's, it's one gram, this powder, you put in 100 ml water in a jar, and uh, then whole house in gels. Especially when you add a little salt, then gels even more. Yeah, that's uh, reporting discovery hydrogel. <coughs> if you look at hydrogel, which is actually on the suggestion of Francis Crick. So I told Alex, which is very good friend of Francis Crick. So I met Francis Crick in 1988. So I went to visit him in 1991 after I made the discovery, the piece of gel, but don't know the molecular detail structure. So we also did X-ray diffraction in the laboratory, but the gel diffraction 
does not work. It's not enough, uh, um, it's not a crystal, so it does not get a diffraction pattern. So I went to see Francis Crick. He suggests, look at it, look at it. I said, look at it by what? He said, look at it by SEM, electron microscope. Yeah. So I did look at it by SEM, find out this has turned out to be a nanofiber scaffold. Okay. So this is a one micron bar, and here a lot of nanofibers, and also nano holes here. The holes between the fibers are a nanoscale between 5 to 200 nanometers. <coughs> so this observation is combined the gelation, so MIT filed the patent. Nita Nelson consulted with Bob Langer, who was real fast in the room. So Bob Langer said this material is new, it's new material, it's amino acid based material, it's harmless to cells. We should file. That's the three point we file. We had zero idea, no idea about the application, about the use. Not at all. Okay. So in the application, pattern application, I did write one sentence. Uh, this material may be used for, for slow drug release because you can see the holes and fibers and so on. Multiple gradients take a long time to come out. Also, Bob Langer has been studying drug release for a long time, so he agreed this could be small drug release, which we wrote in patent 2000, 1992, but when I did, did not do experiment out of 2005, because we chased something else. <clears throat> so now you want to understand the molecular self-assembly phenomenon so we tried to dis discover that last question, why, but also ask how. How do they do this? How could the peptide fiber at the five, six, nine, five nanometer long and assemble something you can see with the naked eye? It's very big, five nanometer can never see, but the gel you can see, and you can see the fiber nanofibers. So we now to study this, a Japanese uh, visiting scientist, a graduate student came to my lab, Japanese, lots of them are very patient. And that's also very, very dedicated and very patient to do the experiment. Repetition is doing many times, not done once, but many times. <coughs> so what I asked them to do is to take different hydrogel, to, can see different hydrogels here. Just hydrogel sonicate this. We know sonication can break the, the gel, the gel no longer gel anymore, just like water, okay? Just, just like water texture. Because initially only one gram per 100 ml, so not very much. <coughs> so he takes this gel and look at the image. We know already from TEM, it's nanofiber. So can for the TEM to from the FM, can see also nanofiber. But at increased magnifications, you can see the nanofiber has two layers, one layer Brother and brighter, another layer is less bright. So that we now know this is double layer. This phenomenon you can only see in the beginning of a self assembly phenomenon time, like one, one, one minute or a few minutes, and also that dilute conditions. Over time, a longer time, you don't see this phenomenon anymore. Okay. So now we sonicate this gel. Break into small pieces, can see very small pieces. But if you sit along, just sitting in the tube in the, on your bench, in the, in the tube, and then two minutes you take another sample, four minutes take another sample, eight minutes, and then 16, 20, so on, put on to mica surface. As you can see, the fiber grow as a function of time. <coughs> By two hours, the fiber already grow into full length. Not complete full length yet, but take 24 hours, glue to the, the, the original, original lens, the fiber. The fiber growth is a total self assembly phenomenon because no catalyst. So in chemistry, you put a catalyst, the polymer polymerize. Here, no catalyst, nothing, just, just water itself. So we not measure kinetics, you can see at a, it's a 60 minutes, this is 60 minutes. And it says two hours, it's 24 hours, 
already into 500, 700 micron, uh, no, um, and this is uh, nanometers. By the here is micron scale already. So this initial uh, 20 minutes, you can see the growth rapidly, and then later it grows just like bacteria grows. It's so essentially saturate and then plateau. But if to sonicate, again, you sonicate, you can see from a water texture, small fibers, when you, you let grow it for 24 hours, you sonicate again, then grow again, you sonicate again, grow again, sonicate again, grow again. You can see it's completely, you can sonicate, grows, the fiber grows back. So that is a self assembly phenomenon. If some, you can sonicate, it breaks down, and do not swell, do, do not self assemble, grow in the origin lens. It's not a self assembly, especially we didn't add any catalyst. So in order to explain the phenomenon, we show here is individual fiber uh, peptides, just one of these here, with green, with blue, with green, with a little red, with uh, blue here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight peptides are here. So now the original state, you can see the peptide have two layers, so we, we saw from FM, and, uh, but they can slide, slide diffusion because the water, this, this green part, the hate water, they want to shear away from water. So now this part have to f force them, water force them to, to self-assemble into this repelling, repelling water. So in, eventually form a bilayer is a fiber. So the fiber we see is a double, double layers a peptide system. Hydrophobic inside, hydrophilic outside. So this is single, single slide, it describes this. Single peptide here, 16 amino acids. So form a double layer of fibers. Double layer fiber is one small segment of this massive and self-assembled a scaffold system. The scaffold is billion billion peptides from the scaffold. The scaffold is the hydrogel. The hydrogel, why is the hydrogel? Because hydrogel is a hydration property very strong, this, this molecules. The water itself has surface, surface tension property and those, uh, those fine structures can be filled up with water that's whole thing become the gel. <clears throat> so now we can use this hydrogel to culture cells in three dimensions. Here's design peptide scope for three D cell culture. So this individual cells you can see, and the cells not only embedded in three, dim three dimensional nanofiber scaffold, but also cells make their own scaffold right here. Some of them make own. So make extracellular matrix after them are very happy in the environment. Here is a comparison with the cells culture on other systems. So here is the nanofiber made by the cells, extracellular matrix, like a collagen, and elastin, and fibronectin, and so on. Total made by cells, nanofiber nano scale, scale. Here is the fiber, microfiber, is 100 micron fiber, uh, the cells on top of that. The scale is so different. So for the nanofiber uh, scaffold, we can culture cells in three dimensions, I, I told you. We can also not only culture initially, cut NH3T3 cells, or the CHO cells and so on, simple tissue cells. Later, we become sophisticated, we can culture original neuron cells. Those neuron cells cultured is come from, from animals' brain. And now they can now form a synapses from the, from the mouse's brain. So this kind of form a synapse, each green dot on this picture is one individual synapse. Because there's a multi-layer here, with, which only show, show you one layer. So we know each neuron can form a synapse, about 5,000 individual synapses 
5,000 to some people even say 10,000 individual synapses. So that's we show this very useful for culture, not only simple tissue cells, but also the complex neuron system. You want to sell for neurons from a synapse, you need to culture up to two weeks before they can do this. Otherwise, they cannot form a synapse. <coughs> Based on that observation, another graduate student, another graduate student, Rattley is Spanky, he takes this gels and then cut the, the brain of animal, cut optical nerve system, cut optical nerve, the animal could not, could not see anymore. So he injects this gel into animal's brain, and in the, the place he cut, without the cut, animal lose the vision, can no longer see anymore, it's rats. And uh, once he injects this gel, the cells uh, regrow, the neurons re, re, uh, recon reconnect. So here shows a very dense connection of the junction of the cut area. So that's, that's uh, this area. So this allows the animal to see again, repair the animal's vision. So he wrote a paper called nano neural netting. Netting means put it together. And the peptide nanofiber scaffold for brain repair and axon regeneration with functional return of vision. In this paper here is published, there's a video link. And uh, you can see the animal with all animal testing, animal can see on that. So during this surgical cutting animals uh, optical nerve system, the same student discovered the peptide not only can and, uh, repair the vision of the repair optical nerve, encouraging neuron cell growth, but also called, uh, he can see the uh, ble bleeding had been stopped by the gel. So, so he wrote another paper, not only wrote paper, he filed a patent as well. It's called a nano hemostatic solution. Immediate hemostasis at a nanoscale. Immediate means a few seconds. So <clears throat> he now deliberately, deliberately, and the cut, the brain of animal takes the blood cutting here. The blood come out. He inject, this is a little needle injection here, and the feel, feel this very fast within a few seconds. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, so to the brain. Later, he also take a former artery, and then here is a cut, here is a needle, and a cut, then now inject this material. So now, after a few seconds, his whole thing got fixed. So this observation led, led to find applications of this material. So for hemostasis, <coughs> Here is uh, some figure showing how the rat brain, spinal cord, hamster brain, from artery, liver, and uh, cut, and so on, can see fixing very fast a 1% peptide scaffold, a hydrogel. This is enlarged liver punch. Again, a few seconds, can get 3%. You can see this is a 20, 20, 20 second scale, and here less than 10 seconds. It's uh, completely and uh, then seal and stop the bleeding. He also did a different percentage, shows 1% take the longer to, to uh, stop bleeding, 2% stop bleeding instantly. Now 2% material now is used for clinical, human clinical heart surgery and liver surgery and lung surgery used for human surgery in the hospital now. And, uh, so very useful material. This explain this individual molecule form this individual molecule come align to form a beta sheet. The beta sheets form a nanofibers, nanofiber from scaffold. In analogy, here is an analogy, like nets, like fishing nets. So just single nets, so this molecule, small molecule can go through quickly. But you have a few, few layers, the molecule goes through slowly, but have lots of layers here, the molecules go even slower. So you have a million layers of this kind of scaffold, 
molecule goes through out very slowly. Okay. <clears throat> so because of that observation, and because of my initial observation was realized this material hydrogel could be used for slow molecular release. <clears throat> so this is a cartoon showing different molecules, uh, proteins, and the drugs, and small proteins, and DNA or RNA, nucleic acids, and so on. You can encapsulate them, and that can come out very slowly. <coughs> so we published a paper showing different protein molecules. We published paper first is in public journal of control release, and it demonstrates small molecules come out indeed very slowly. So we go one step further and take proteins different size, and this one is in the monoclonal antibody, and then put into the scaffold hydrogel inside. Before you syndicate this, and add this into that, when the soft symbol into an antifiber, those molecules that become evenly distributed in the net hydrogel. So you measure, measure release, show protein release from soft semi peptide hydro the scaffold, and the different molecules at different size, then come out different, different time. Small molecule come out first, fast, a large molecule come out slowly, and it take longer to come out, this monoclonal antibody. If you look at the, the scale, this molecule is much smaller than that. And also the charged molecule. And a different percentage gels give a different, different percentage release. Higher percentage get a slower release, lower percentage get faster release. There's a small, molecule, small protein lysozyme, there's a large protein IgG, the monoclonal antibody. Later, we also show you can deliver much longer time. Here is 100 days. 100 days, the protein still not come out completely. We believe this probably take uh, six months before the complete release, this protein. Here is protein, the, uh, the hydrophobic uh, hydrogel as in the syringe. This syringe is used to stop bleeding for the human surgical operations. You can ap apply the surgical gel very quickly so the whole thing get, get uh, covered and the blood doesn't come out. <clears throat> Later, we also design the peptide for different things. Here is a, is a picture showing three bonds with a three different design uh, jacket. So now we're also now doing design peptides. This part here is the original peptide, but this additional, additional part is peptide design <coughs> system. You can not only increase the length, put the peptide, small peptide such as RGD, not uh, so for, for cell binding, and also proteins, different growth factors, and also hormones and so on, directly link onto the scaffold. So it's directly linked onto that. So this scaffold here become called designer scaffold, and it's uh, not kind of <coughs> so help the mouse, mouse stem cells differentiation and, uh, and prolong the cell culture system. And the same student from the Jilin, now it's professor in Milan, and here now take this material, design material here, to do spinal cord repair in rats. And so he published a paper in, in 2012 showing rats can, after injecting this material, rats can move almost, f not fully recover, but recover good enough, can walk in. <clears throat> so for the design peptide, we're also showing this without this uh, extra motif, such as RGD, the cells do not migrate inside the gel. This is three-dimensional system gels. But if you add the actual motif, the cells can migrate deep into the gel. This is done by uh, Akihiro Hori from, from Japan. He spent uh, some time in my three years of my life. This paper we published called Biological Design of self assembly Peptide 95 scaffold significantly enhance osteoblast proliferation differentiating and, and three-dimensional migration. So this additional 
small motif, a few peptides, for amino acid residues, changes the flavor of this uh, hydrogel motif scaffold. In analogy, is uh, it's, uh, take a coffee cup, a cup of coffee, you don't add the cream, don't add sugar, you taste it differently. And lots of people want to add sugar, add the cream, and uh, addition, that's so add additional taste, the cells can migrate because of added extra motif. <clears throat> and we also show this uh, type one, type three collagen can be produced from the human pre dental ligament fibroblast in 3D peptide scaffold without extra tonal, extra growth factors. Okay, so this is uh, rather the original peptide without any additional uh, uh, designer motif. So the cells do not differentiate uh, many of this uh, type 1, type 3 collagen. But if you add this motif, the cells encourage the cells. Cells not only grow very well, and also then differentiate and can produce type 1 and type 3 collagens. This is antibody staining to show type 1, type 3 collagen production in the cells. This is important for cosmetic industry. Cosmetic industry is trying to produce collagen for use to, for skin. But that's temporary. But if this, this is collagen not only production, but also we showed previously, this encourages cell migration. You can stimulate young, young cells, the skin stem cells migrate from the deep layer of the body uh, into the upper top layer to keep your skin um, very young looking. Here is uh, the journey. And from 1990, discovery of self peptides, and the red is business development, blue is basic science research. So discovered an MID fat pattern and uh, prepared the papers about turned down by journals without review. And then finally the paper gets published in PNS, turned down by both nature and science. And MIT licensed the patent to a company called Hercules. 1995, published more papers in biomaterials, and 2000 published papers for neurons, three-dimensional cell culture, and so on. And so on, you can see the journey until 2000. 11, and uh, so company 3D Matrix, a form 3D Matrix here. And so, but, so this is company completed clinical trials, and then company went IPO. So that in uh, 2011, 21 years. So it's a long time. Most people don't have the convict and passion don't have self-confidence, then all quit long time ago. So you must trust it yourself and for this. Um, now, I tell you another story, the peptide. Again, it's from curiosity-driven research. So in 1992, I went to a conference called the Golden Conference on the title of Origin of Life, 1992, because I saw that my fiber could also be very useful for origin of life, self suffering system. Life is a self assembly system in many ways. So I asked a very simple question. So what are the simplest molecules that could form enclosures to encapsulate some simple biomolecules that start the origin of life? That's just a very curious scientific question. So I made some peptides. So by the graduate student, Steve Young, Steve Young, in, in the lab. And uh, we call the lipids-like peptides. Lipids-like peptides, that is, you have a <coughs> hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head. So this protein has a hydrophobic tail, hydrophilic head with a negative charge. This protein, this peptide with six Amino acid, seven amino acids, six amino acids, hydrophobic tail, and the charged lysine hydrophobic, hydrophilic tail. 
this negative charge, this positive charge. This just reverse, put this negative charge on this side, this peptide is put a positive charge over here, and so on and so forth. And we made, this is less than 10 of them, we made it about two dozen different kinds. The short one is the 44 peptides, it's L3K, L is leucine, K is lysine, so only four peptides form this. Uh, not, the, those guys do not form 95 scaffold, but they form something else. <coughs> they form the vesicles. Here is six valine, one aspartic acid. So you can form this kind of, uh, same kind of nanotube structure. Those are most likely mice cells. Mice cells, uh, it's a peptide, and it's form a, a circle inside, it has a little water in it. So once you form the nanotube, you can do kind of neutron scattering. Neutron scattering can determine the thickness of this molecule, this uh, nanotube. So as far as neutron scattering, it shows uh, roughly five nanometers. Five nanometers is a two lengths of this molecule, double. So this is roughly three less than three nanometers, and the two of these will add up to five nanometers. So that's why I made this molecule like that. This structure is just like lipids type structure. <coughs> so we published a lot of papers here. We also nature biotechnology and the public paper and uh, put our research on the cover. So in collaboration with uh, Professor Peter Lagler in Graz, and uh, in Graz then uh, specialized in called uh, and small angle X-ray scattering. So we give the peptide to them, they mix it with, oil, with the lipids molecule here, monoleate, yeah, molecules here. <coughs> See, with lipids alone, they form this kind of structure. With a mixed peptide with, with uh, lipids molecule, the whole structure is bigger. By, by the small angle X-ray scattering, you can see exactly this peptide, the lipids alone, the low concentration of peptide, medium concentration of peptide, the size changes, you can see. And finally, this is uh, a lot of peptide, less lipids molecule, also the change. So by, by this kind of technique, you can show, by using a small angle X-ray scattering, you can determine the size of the sulfur symbol system, and also sulfur, this is like a micelle to structure. And uh, so it can do well. So this explain this my cell structure and uh, here is a positive charge and blue positive charge head as a pink is a negative charge head. So if you add this, take the protein out, membrane protein out, you add this peptide molecules, you can stabilize the protein into very stable form. The protein otherwise aggregate will not lose function. If you stabilize with peptides, they will not lose function. The peptide can also, of course, stabilize with the lipids, the bilayers, membrane as well. So this is, uh, we were most interested in peptide stabilized membrane proteins. We published more than 10 papers in this area. <coughs> Finally, because this one Look, it's hollow inside. This here is also hollow inside. So because it's 150 to 100 microns, and uh, no, the no, nanometers. So it's a single layer, it's only two nanometers. So that's what we sh shows the nano. So this inside here could be hosted by other molecules, such as small proteins, small DNA, small molecule, uh, RNA, and so on. So in this case, this is 2015. In Japanese, use uh, lipids like peptide 6 alanine A6K in conflict with srRNA target treat human breast cancer. So this work was done by National Japanese National Cancer Institute, National Cancer Center, to this development of a novel nucleic acid drug discovered by 
National Cancer Center <coughs> choose the complex this peptide with uh, the small nucleus RNA and uh, here a three D matrix. Uh, you can now couple together in the complex. Then can go treated with breast cancer. Those breast cancer patients have already been considered to be terminal, and no other drugs have become effective. And uh, uses new drug, the siRNA drug, and to treat them. And then treat five patients. Five patients as today still survived, still living. So that's pretty good news. Um, so that's uh, this, uh, this done by those people, 3D Matrix. He was initially founder of 3D Matrix CEO. He recently stepped down and gave this, his uh, button to the young person. Now he's a CEO, he's a chairman for uh, 3D Matrix. It's put together with Bob Nanger and myself and in visiting Bob Nanger. So Bob Nanger, so I devised to Nita Nelson, we found the pattern in 1992. We didn't know anything what can be used for until now. We know it has been used for a surgical treatment for disease. And uh, recently, GSK is one big pharmacy become extremely interested because of the peptide fiber, the hydrogel, could be used for encapsulating small molecule drugs to protecting a drug's half-life and also for slow release. So when the big company got interested in this for drug formulations, and then this material become very useful. Instead, of take a drug three times a day, or you can don't need to take one time a day or once a week for this kind of kind of system. Okay, <clears throat> here is MIT from the many companies, and uh, this is my 3D matrix, and I highlight by MIT. I think 20. 13. Uh, among them, HP, here a and uh, <coughs> Electronic Inc. This one is uh, all the Kindle, Amazon Kindle, is by e Ink Technology. The Covio is a company that print, printed electronics and founded by Joe Jacobson. And uh, the in, instead of uh, use a fab uh, electronics, you can uh, buy printing now become very popular now printing electronics. Yeah. And the zip card and the Dropbox and lots of those and the surface logics, the Alchemy, the Alchemy, Alchemy, Alchemy with Cisco, also MIT founded companies. I know I'm going to say Alchemy, Alchemy here, left, yeah. Alchemy here. So that's my, so I hope the internet to fast route routing uh, information. So this is just a small fractions MIT found the company by graduate student, by, by uh, people who left MIT. And here is uh, it's 2011, 2011 U.S. Senate resolution salute to MIT in commemorating 150 years anniversary founding MIT. So this is uh, for Massachusetts. They might found uh, 6,900 companies by MIT alumni in the state of Massachusetts alone, because the senator from Massachusetts, which have earned worldwide sales of roughly 164 billion per year annually, and uh, represent 26% total sales made by Massachusetts companies. That's pretty substantial, one university a quarter Massachusetts uh, uh, income. So here is distinguished living alumni MIT have founded approximately 25,800 companies as this date. Now seven, six years later, this is uh, 30,000 more. Provided jobs for 3.3 million people who high pay jobs, very high pay jobs. And uh, around the world and earned 2.2 trillion, so that 12 zeros in annual sales. So that's pretty significant. Every year is annual income by company founded by MIT. So the revenue earned by MIT founded companies equals 11th 
economy of a nation. That's pretty good. So it's between Russia and India. And the higher India, just a little bit lower than Russia. By technology invented by one university, that's pretty good. Stanford is on par with MIT. So probably it's about India and about the same number. Good. So this is a, a scientific presentation. Now, I just have to tell you a few of the things. It made a globe contributions is to stimulate, encourage, and support curiosity-driven scientific research in order to generate scientific knowledge. It to translate scientific knowledge and research into enabling technologies. And then three is develop the knowledge-based economy for the benefit of mankind and for the return of investment. But for benefit of mankind is the first order and return investment is later. So the order here is high, cannot be changed. Must be this, this, and that. It cannot be reversed. <coughs> Has to be stimulated knowledge, generated knowledge first, use the knowledge from the knowledge-based companies, and so on, so forth. Uh, here is two, the three key ingredients for translating research into a new economy. To stimulate, encourage, and support curiosity-driven scientific research in order to generate knowledge, this just like, uh, oh, this is the same as the last one. Here is to take risks and uh, undeterred by countless difficulties and failures. So that's why persistence is a luck. That's what Alex Rich said. And to con constantly and continuously ask good scientific and business questions, big and small. And to be very patient for 10 years and be flexible for unexpected opportunities. So that's, uh, and finally, this is a different funding agency provided the uh, research funding. <coughs> you can see um, this DARPA, ARO, ORF, this military funding, the funding high risk research to do with materials. And because of wound healing, now material useful, so military can use for wound healing. Use, use. And uh, this is a corporation funded the research. Corporations have a need, they need this. So they see the potential useful and found this research. Okay, so uh, um, here is Max Perut. Max Perut, he said in science, truth always wins. Okay, so this Max Perut lecture theater in Cambridge in uh, laboratory molecular biology. So he's, after he died, and then make this plaque in honor of him because he said this, science, truth always wins. It sometimes takes a long time, but in the end, always wins. Thank you very much. <laughs>